wadau bana mulisikia mkurugenzi mkuu alisema tunapoteza bilioni mbili daily daily in fact leo tumepoteza mbili <laughs> zimeshaenda nimekutana nazo kwa stage ya OTC zikipanda matatu ya Kayole <laughs> 2 billion gone huyo huyo mkurugenzi mkuu akatuuliza sometime back sasa okay yes yes kuna corruption mnataka nifanye nini sababu tumesema sisi channel yetu ni ya positivity hatutaki wao oh, tukae ni kama aa nataka tukue very solution oriented e, nataka tuchukue fursa hii twende pale kwa comments tuandike kwa kina gaubaga if you were in his shoes what would you have done tuone kama hizi suggestions zinaweza fikia tuone kama tutaokoa aki bilioni mbili do you know bilioni mbili wadau Thika road ilitengenezwa na 32 billion aki imagine okay sawa weka inflation weka inflation tuseme 32 billion ya 2012 ni 40 billion ya saa hii aki tunakula thika road ngapi in 2 months hiyo ni 60 120 120 billion divided by 40 aki tunakula thika road tatu kila 2 months every 2 months tunakula thika road tatu tusaidieni aki mkuru tusaidieni mkuru tuendeni hapo tu kwa comments tuandike vitu ambavyo vinaweza kutusaidia kusimamisha wizi ambao unaendelea kwa nchi hii sawa sawa najua atashukuru i will personally email the, the, your suggestions to him at a fry species twende kazi episode 9 na kama K if you see Mkurugenzi in the building you just know he's got the juice <laughs> wadau bana kama mnanijua vizuri mnajua mimi ni mtu bana napiga kazi ya sinema sinema ndio kitu ambayo imenilea nimependa hii kitu tangu nikiwa mtoto mdogo kama hujasikia story yangu unafaa ufuate hii series ya eh, inaitwa nini ile ya Esther eh, 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 inaitwa CTA cleaning the airwaves iko hapa story Uta, utapenda matata sana so of course eh, hiyo kama ndio ilikuwa love yangu kuna watu nilikuwa na look up to sana na among the people i looked up to mnaweza kuwa by the wengi wenyu pengine hamjamsikia but he was very instrumental in uh, uh, matters journalism in this country kuna mpiga picha hodari photographer and cinematographer extraordinaire alikuwa anajulikana kama eh, bwana Mohamed Amin. Mohamed Amin eh, was a gentleman of Asian eh, descent. Alizaliwa pale Isili mwaka wa 1943. Eventually alikuja akafungua kampuni inaitwa Camera Fix. Camera Fix bana alipiga kazi bana all eh, international media eh, houses. Aliwapigia mapicha ama kuwashutia ma videos na nini na nini. So goes without saying eventually alikama akakuwa a very big deal very big deal uh, alikam pia kukakuwa na foundation in his name inaitwa Muamin Foundation akaanzisha shule pia ya ku support vijana kama mimi ambao walikuwa na love for media eh, na shule yenyewe ilikuwa inaitwa Morphos sijui kama Morphos bado yuko mpaka leo but it was a splendid institution deadly by the way ukipitia Morphos hapa kwa industry watu walikuwa wanajua tu eh hey, umsevile ana handle business hapa nje hii ni material ya Morphos maze So Amin has uh, has a very beautiful story na nikaona maze kwa headline hitters bana sababu aligonga vichwa vya habari severally not even once or twice ah uh, nitakuwa nikiwafanyia disservice sana ni spoa pigia story ya my very very uh, good mentor bwana Muhammad Amin So Muhammad Amin alizaliwa Isilini 
1943 as a born of an, a railway engineer and I think a housewife if I'm not wrong. But hiyo time bana wale engineers wa reli bana kuko na pesa jo pre independence hiyo time. Also alikuwa ameka mapa kufanyishwa tu kazi. So do maze kidogo ingi fiti Nairobi na waita meeting kuja we we nani alikuwa mtoke <laughs> India nyi we mm. Okay siko sure kama ni India ama ni Pakistan. Okay I don't know. But uh, he's of Asian descent. So maze ikafika point maze baba ya Muamin akaona eh hey, hapa bana familia bana na watoto saba wanaumia mama ndio huyo nini wacha twende tuone kama tunaweza pata better life wapi next door wakakimbia teke teke mpaka TZ so mohamed amir al spend a good chunk of his childhood in tanzania alienda shule pale nini eh, primo high school so akiwa high school pale ndio alipata mazee hii 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 passion ya kupiga picha ile muingia mazee akaanza kupiga watu hii picha pale shule nini alafu unajua maana mwindi bana na biashara Ah, alikuwa anawatandika mbaya sana. Picha weka pesa hapa wewe. Picha weka nini wewe? Kuna kitu ya bure Tanzania. So akaanza kutengeneza do hiyo design. Wadau, sijui kama msha experience hii kitu. Wakati uko shule na unatengeneza pesa, all of a sudden shule inaachaga ku make sense. Sijui kama ni mimi peke yangu nili experience hii kitu. Unajua nilikuwa tahidi yai nikiwa college. Sasa nashindwa, itahidi naenda nalipwa. I college nafanya nini? What am I doing here? but sisi tulishikilia Muhammad Amin on the other hand ah akasema you acha ikae akaenda mtaa akaambia wazazi jo ah wadau hapa bana hii kitu yangu imekubali eh wacha mimi niingie biz nipige kazi maze so hapo tayari tushaingia in the 60s at 19 amewacha shule anagonga hii kitu so wadau kama mnajua mambo ya history vizuri mnajua bana in the 60s was very instrumental in, uh, to africa uh, in terms of uh, stories of independence na nini most of us tulipata independ- independence around your time so in amanisha around the 60s eh hey, events zenye zilikuwa news worthy zilikuwa kibao muamini amejipanga bana na mashine pale kama nje anaokota you name it muhammed amin was there 1963 kenya tukipal by the way na ile picha ya ya uh, video ya Kenyatta aki akisoma inaitwa nini ile acceptance speech wakati sasa anahandiwa republic chukua sasa kimbia na country hiyo picha very very high chances Muhammad Amin ndio ali shoot hiyo clip very high chances when everyone around us walikuwa wanapata independence Muhammad Amin was there any key thing that happened around the 60s he was definitely there so around that time in a small island pale Tanzania inaitwa nini Zanzibar mali mnasumbua boyfriends wa wapeleke eh hey, mnatupatia stress nyinyi eh hey, eh hey, mun... nyinyi bataidhuru so Zanzibar mazee wameamua jo tumechoka na historia kukuwa bana sisi tuko under TZ jo tunataka kukuwa autonomous so vijana wame wamejipanga pale wameamua tunafanya nini ku sa kudita tunataka sasa tuchukue usukani tujigovern sisi wenyewe waka skuma ma rebel suko Muhammad Amin akaingia Zanzibar quick fast anapiga hiki kitu mazee ana ana interview ama rebels nini kila kitu unfortunately mazee i guess maybe regime waliona eh hey, na huyu journalist anapatia watu ya time ni nani who are you wewe ni nani una interview ma rebels hapa nini Muhammad Amin captured akatupwa ndani 28 days kila asubuhi anamkia tocha asubuhi jua ikiwaka tu hivi unajua tu oh my gosh it's time now wale mtengeneza for 28 days he lost 28 pounds alikuwa anapoteza 1 pound every day hiyo kwa watu ambao american system haikuwa kwa nini yetu sana 1 pound ni kama kama nusu kilo hapo yeah so in 28 days alipoteza almost 14 kgs as a result of torture maze regime hapo ilikuwa inamfanya mbaya but eventually after 28 days akakuwa released akaingia wapi akarudi Kenya wadau wacha kijana apige kazi maze kila kitu maze anapiga news zake fiti ana package poa anatuma kwa ma broadcasting houses nini mpaka international media sasa washaanza kumulika maze hey, kuna kijana hapa anapiga mambo safi eh hey, huyu kijana bana wacha eh hey, tucheze na yeye maze akaanza kutengeneza pesa yake sasa One thing about Muhammad Amin hii na wase wengi usema Muhammad Amin ni wale wase lazima ukoeni msema zee unajitambua sana kuweza hata kukaa na yeye. Ushaona wale wase wako so obsessed na what they do 
hakuna kitu kingine na make sense as in ka family yake yenyewe alikuwa na waona like in one year anaweza hesabu ile time ameona family yake wewe unakuja kumwambia oh siwezi fanya hivyo aelewi una unaniambia nini wakethiki yake ilikuwa out of this world na mazee alikuwa gampaka ana yani beast akiwa job wewe kuweza ku maintain kukaa na Mohamed Amin yenyewe wewe ni hatari but hiyo quality yake hiyo that kapicha in him ilimfanya mazee akapiga kitu kingine ya maajabu sana mazee sometime pale 1969 so in 1969 mwezi wa was it july july of 1969 on a fine saturday morning one of kenya's greatest politicians eh, jamaa hatari sana pale anaitwa tom boya ameingia kwa pharmacy pale tomboya eh, tomboya street eh, achukue dawa mbili tatu sababu alikuwa fatigue imemtandika david alikuwa gani mtu maku travel nini nini kafatigue kameanza kumwai akasema acha niingie hapa kwa pharmacy nishike matembe kiasi niende ni nitulie mtanga lao so maze tomboya ameingia pale pharmacy amechukua nini amepiga banta hapo na mwenye pharmacy eh, ilikuwa ni pharmacy ya wahindi mtu na wife wake hapo wameaga na poa ni haja mtu wangu wewe na umetutupa sana jose hata uingie dina hivi tukupikie kakari nini nini toma na washoi na mambo mtu wangu acha ni meze meze tu dawa nikiwa fit mtu wangu lazima ni watembelee au sio sasa jo iweze sana mama wa shop anamwambia ni aje mtu wangu si hata nikupige push ni ku ah, no 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 stay shaka wewe we, kana shop ah mimi na kufungua tu mlango nimepaka mashini yangu baridi hapo kwa street mimi nitaingia niende shughuli za shughuli zangu mzee tomboya anafungua mlango ya pharmacy hivi jo anataka kutoka kwa shop aingie kwa gari parked right there on the street jamaa mzee gunman anatokea from nowhere anampiga risasi tatu baridi na na disappear into thin air. Hii time yote wasia waelewi kabisa. Wana jua kuna shoot up but haijawa hit kabisa ni nani ameshutiwa. Ndio wasia wakikamkuangalia wana realize oh my god mazee ni the great tomboya. Wasia walikuwa na so much hope na tomboya mazee walikuwa naona mazeka kuna mtu anaenda kututoa kwa ngori yani kwa hii country. This is the guy. A very young chap at the time he was only 39 years old but alikuwa amefanya big things. In fact One of these days ndale tarafiki yangu anaitwa Ngatia awapigie tu story ya Tomboya msikie jamaa vile alikuwa hatari maze. We lost a very very influential person that Saturday morning in 1969. So Tomboya ameshakulishwa ndengu hapo hata madakika zijaisha. Mohamed Amin ako somewhere in town amesikia hiyo ripoti. Eh kuna mse influential ameangushwa na rumor has it inaweza kuwa ni Tomboya. One thing about Muamin, aijalishi ameenda wapi? Ni kanisa au si kanisa? Ni ku, maybe ku worship ama ako roundi zake ama ako nini? Kamenje zake zilikuwa na yeye at all times. Of those who are wondering, kamenje ni camera. Ah, alikuwa amejipin 24/7. So vile tu report ilimfikia jo kuna eh, jamaa ameangushwa pale Tomboya Street na very easily inaweza kuwa ni Tomboya. Quick fast. Akaingia pale maze, akapata majamaa ndio ame wanajaribu kum resuscitate pale tomboya still ako alive aja dedi majamaa wako kazi wana try kum resuscitate ule muindi of course mwenye pharmacist yashagundua tomboya amepigwa risasi ashapiga ambulance ambulance imekuja teke teke ambulance wamekama wamefanya CPR hapo haraka haraka first aid ya kujaribu jaribu wamemweka kwa machela stretcher imenuliwa teke teke imeingizwa kwa nini kwa ambulance sasa wanataka wafunge mlango wakimbize tomboya Nairobi hospital waende wajaribu ku kumresuscitate before maraia wafunge mlango hivi Mohamed Amin na kamera yake kwa akaruka ndani ya ambulance hiyo haijawahi fanyika nyema najua mtu influential kitu ikimhapenia vile security inakuwa crazy inakuwa tight so for Mohamed Amin kuruka ndani ya hiyo ambulance knowing full well umse akon amelala hapa ni nani ai wadau hiyo hiyo ni ile mnaambiaga mtu akona akona ni ni yani ni ile sasa ile sasa kabisa hii ro safi wewe yeah so the ambulance goes all the way to Nairobi hospital the doctors do everything they can unfortunately they are not able to save Tomboya's life Tomboya and pass away at Nairobi hospital on that Saturday eh uh, eh uh, July of 1969 any video any photograph that you have ever come across 
ya Tomboya either akiwa kwa street wa kimresuscitate akiingizwa kwa ambulance akiwa kwa ambulance akiingizwa Nairobi hospital na akiwa kwa hospital bed hiyo footage yote i tell you hiyo take it to the bank ni footage ya Mohamed Amin no other camera person alikuwa na exclusive footage hiyo design na ni sababu ya ile great um jamaa alikuwa na willing to risk everything to get the perfect picture true definition of a uh, I mean definition of a true photojournalist so that was 1969 maze of course yeye limo elevate to insane levels bbc nini wote hakuna msi akona hii nini so mohamed amin maze ndio anauzia exclusive ah bra next level maze 1971 inafika our neighbors uganda kuna jamaa amekalia usukani pale anaitwa milton obote kuna jamaa mwingine ako kwa bush ameamua a ah, uongo pia umilton obote akwende huko kwani iko nini tunamtoa kwa power ameenda ameorganize bana ameshikana na vijana wameorganize kudita amekuja ametoa milton obote kwa kiti the jamaa miramba minne six foot guy maze anaitwa eh, idi amin dada amekuja amepiga milton obote amekimbiza milton obote exile amechukua serikali maze so now uganda iko under a dictatorship na ujamaa ana ni hatari watu wanamuogopa deadly umse in fact was all gonna say anaweza kuwa alikuwa on drugs the reasoning yake ilikuwa out of this world muhammed amin ni nani atambui amesema sasa huu jamaa ameingia mimi nataka nimpige pia mimi exclusive interview so what does he do anaenda anapiga simu state house uganda anaambia hao majamaa ni aje e, nataka kubongana idi amin sasa namuuliza eh uh, ni nani mimi naitwa Muamin. Chike vile jina ile come through down. So operator pale kwa switchboard akajijazia ah if you want to talk to Idi Amin and his name is Muhammad Amin. So it is obvious the relatives akampitisha through. Wale shanga sana kuona John Mwindi anaingia hiyo eri. <laughs> so mazee Muhammad Amin ameingia huko mazee amebonga na Idi Amin. Eh hata Idi Amin mazee ameshanga jo wewe wewe we, ni mse umejitambua eh wase hapa waingiagi hivi hivi but nimekupenda wewe ni mse mazee uko na psych fit sana ya kazi jo since sema walikuwa ma best but they were acquaintances eh at least Idi Amin alitambua ya kuna journalist hapa mazee anafanya mambo deadly Mohamed Amin akaendelea kupiga kazi deadly until 1984 Tukifikiria sasa Muhammad Amin amefanya kila kitu now it can't get greater than this 1984 famine in Agonga Ethiopia unprecedented hii haijawahi onekana ever mazee watoiwa na dead left right and center mazee Muhammad Amin anatumwa Ethiopia kwenda kufanya nini kurekod hiyo kitu of course Ethiopian government haitaki hiyo story mnachoma sasa mataka kuonyesha world mzima vile si tuna dead huku kwetu haiwezi everybody else mazee ali back down kuna msa anataka kuongea na, na, na authorities hapo ku, kujua vile tuta tell stories hapa muhammed amin ali make it his personal project kukatia tu regime kuingiza tu box mazee please wacheni ni shoot tu kitu kidogo mazee you never know help hour say inaweza kuwa ni mimi mimi ndio link between eh, wale wasota wasaidia na hao watu tafadhali mazee It took him six months to convince the government or kubali maze aingi Ethiopia apige yo picha. My goodness, the images that were transmitted after Muhammad Amin aingi Ethiopia maze. Wow, 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 wow. Basically, any time una una wasa una ongea story ya oh, relief food, nini, tuna need funding ya nini, lafu wa meka picha ya mtoto, ame konda deadly maribs nini, more often than not, yo picha ilichukuliwa 1984 na Muhammad Amin walitumia hizo picha za Ethiopia ku source for funding for the longest time so this is what hiyo story ya 1974 84 ilifanya immediately after Muhammad Amin amepiga hiyo hizo ma, ma, footage nini nini ali release hiyo footage world over so hizo photos maze zenye zilipigwa na Muhammad Amin that time in 1984 ilienda maze ka get attention ya UK na US maze maseleb wakashikana and through that ndio wakadu ile ilikuwa inaitwa nini ilikuwa inaitwa stay alive campaign wakapiga ile song bigi we are the world we are the children makumkayo song ilikuwa ni sababu ya picha za Muhammad Amin 
I kid you not, hiyo kitu ilimuelevate to a whole new level. Alishinda every award you can think of. Journalistic. Every journalistic award you can think of. Emmy award, Peabody, as in zote. Alibeba awards kuruka jua. Ile selflessness alikuwa nayo. Na maze story na semekana kiwa pale kwa ground, alikuwa napiga picha na anabeba watu hii wenye wanakani kama wanataka kudedi maze. Kama wananidukishwa mahali, anawabeba kwa mkono hivi. Mkono moja na mtoto, mkono ingine iko na kamera hapa na ame hand still camera zuko. By the way, oh, jamaa alikuwa baba, design alikuwa na operate video camera. Na unajua zilikuwa zile beta cam zile bigi na ame hang still camera start hapa. Anawapigia bonge la shot. So 1984 was a very instrumental year for Muhammad Amin. Literally, ali change narrative ya hii world maze. Big deal. So akaendelea kupiga kazi, akaendelea kupiga kazi hiyo eh, hiyo decade ya 80s ikaisha tukaingia 1990s. Maze 1991. Same same country, Ethiopia. Maze I don't know what it is about Muhammad Amin's story and this country Ethiopia. I I don't know. I don't know. So 1984 amepiga story ya famine in Ethiopia. Ime elevate to a whole new level. 1991 Mavijana huko wamechoka na, na regime yenye iko Ethiopia at the time. President ni nani? Jamaa anaitwa Mengistu Heli Mariam. Ah wanadai tu umechoka na umsema ze. It's about time ame atoke hata yeye. So ma rebel mazao wameshikana maze sasa wana advance towards Addis. Wanataka kwenda kutoa jamaa eh, state house maze. Kwa palace yao wanaitaga palace I think. So Mohamed Amin of course vitu kama hizi frontline man oh jamaa alikuwa amekava kila kitu famine wars nini you name it so of course bila alisikia Nigeria jo huko ni noma i mean eh, Ethiopia ni noma straight straight akaingia huko so maze akaenda akapiga interview ama rebels nini in fact there is a famous eh, video clip of him ako juu ya pickup ya rebels actually iko pickup ilikuwa tank kifaru either either tank ama pickup siko sure one of the two Mazee ako, ako juu anaokota footage mazee. Na unajua vile rebels jo kwanza kudilawa say jo ah so waga wa shake mbaya. Wewe unajiamini aje mpaka unaenda kupanda magari zao ndio upate footage. Haujali pengine kuna government forces wanaweza kuwa wako karibu wapige hawa rebels mabomu ma na huko hapo. Yaani ujali wewe mazee uko katika ile pilka pilka ya clearly wadao. This guy umjama it goes without say. that time in 1991 before ta rudi kenya akiwa tu huko maze uh, rebels i think washa take over the regime wameenda maze vitu zao weapons zao zote zimeenda zimedampiwa kwa site flani maze wameenda wamezdamp huko grenades nini rocket launchers you name them so vile zimedampiwa pale muhammed amin ako kwa hoteli some kilometers away from the dump site so i don't know what happens but something triggers uh, an explosion kwa hizi hizi vitu zimetupwa hapa so from his hotel room anaona bonge la explosion as in it lit up the sky literally kukakani kama mchana na ilikuwa usiku ile happen usiku explosion so of course mohamed amin being mohamed amin akasema yo asubuhi bro tunachangamka huko quick fast so daybreak like this sole ilitokelezea tu hivi akachukua jamaa wake wa sound akamwambia niaje twende so hiyo sound unajua hiyo time although hata sikuizi tuna do hivyo video na sound na recordiwa separately so akabeba sound guy wake wakaingia huko kwa hiyo dump site wakapata by there ah, ma, ma, ma nini zimetupo huko ma grenades nini so wakati wako pale mazee wanapiga piga mapicha jo ma video kuonesha vile mazee regime wame dump ma weapon hapo mazee another detonation ina happen and the thing goes off the explosion is so big sound guy wake mazee akiwa pale na mashini yake ya mixer mazee akapigwa na shrapnel akadedi on the spot mohamed amin alikuwa na mkono moja mazee iko kwa viewfinder i guess ilikuwa on the way ikatandikwa na, na shrapnel it was ripped to pieces kabisa yani mkono gone in ethiopia so mazee ah, amepoteza beshta yake hapa mkono imego ikabidi jo ni kusafirishwa teke teke tolewa ethiopia juu hiyo time mazee jo hivi ta rebels na regime hakuna hata ma hospitali fiti nini akaeko kwa ndege teke teke Wilson Airport straight to hospitali so of course mazee death ya sound guy wake jo limfanya lim mbaya 
mkono ndio hiyo imeenda maze. So kaka hosti jo mkono ikafungwa fiti nini nini ile time tu aliambiwa now you're ready to, you can go home unaweza enda upumzike nyumbani ah uongo mbaya alienda home two days akarudi job as in un msel kwa natambua kazi yake hiyo design maze. so ilienda mpaka ikafika point akaenda akaekewa prosthetic arm juu ile mkono ndio inafanya mambo hapa kwa mafocusing na nini na nini akaenda akaekewa eh um, is false arms huko US maze mkono iko fiti mechanical ina move vipoa kabisa akarudi kazi immediately 91 ndo mkono inapotea 93 maze Somalia ikawaka deadly Kenya ilikuwa imetuma journalist kadhaa huko i think they were working for either Reuters or something siko sure maze wakaenda wakauliwa na Somali huko mbaya walikuwa stoned to death ilikuwa ni noma hiyo ni ile time maze Somalia walikuwa na beef na US wakaangusha helicopter ya US dead black hawk down nakumbuka hiyo so hiyo story pia ikambo deadly so akaanza ku get zile ideas that maybe maybe nimepatia na enough maybe sahi ni time ya si ati kuondokea but maybe sahi na need to tell stories about africa good stories about africa eh hey, maze as in eh hizo vitu tumepitia bana is insane insane maze So akaanzisha show flani inaitwa Africa Journal. Africa Journal ilikuwa tu ina highlight stories ambazo zina happen Africa maze. Kama uli grow up in the 80s 90s lazima uli watch Africa Journal juu ilikuwa na kamiki KTN at some point. So Africa Journal imekami kaanza ku grow imekuwa big and natembea tembea countries nini 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 nini. One time maze ikabidi aende Ethiopia tena kufanya stories akabeba yeye na jamaa fulani waga anaandika captions za hizo picha zake so yeye akipiga picha kuna mse anamwandikia hizo ma captions nini nini so wamembeba fiti wameenda wapi wameenda Ethiopia wamepiga kazi yao safi kila kitu iko sawa sasa ni turudi wapi turudi Nairobi wakaenda airport pale hadi mazao wa kabod Ethiopian Airlines eh, schedule kufika Nairobi eh, i think in, in like 4 hours siko sure waga ina take how long kutoka kutoka Addis na wakaingia fiti na plane Boeing 767 ika take off maze. Yo, maze wakiwa airborne. Majama watatu wanatokelezea tu wap from nowhere. Wanakam maze moja amebeba box. Box iko na mawaya zimetokelezea huku nini. Wakaenda pale mbele wakasema ni aje wadao. Ah, uh, izeni jo tunawaribia trip yenu. Lakini sisi bana tuna hepa Ethiopia. Hiyo regime iko pale bana ni regime itutaki. So si tunasika saila mwapi Australia na tukisema ati tuna go the legal way hakuna vile tutatoka so hii ndege yenu unajua inaenda Nairobi lakini kwanza lazima mpige U-turn mtupeleke Australia alafu nyinyi mrudi Nairobi sisi hatuna shida na nyinyi so ikakuwa haya ndege imetekwa iko kwa mikono za hijackers report ikafika kwa pilot pale mbele ni aje maze e, sini hijackers tunataka oh oh wewe piga kona wewe unaenda Nairobi kufanya nini tunaenda Australia mtu wangu tuweke huko we rudi Nairobi ufanye mambo yako pilot anawaambia ah wadau sijui kama mnajua vile ndege za operate lakini si ubebanga fuel enough for the journey enough atubebangi excess fuel juu sasa hiyo ni weight weight equals ni expensive as in mbona tubebe weight nyingi for nothing so ma hijackers wakaambia sasa jo mimi sijui maybe utatafuta stage mpali kwa hewa tukojolee tank twende juu wacha nikwambie au landi ndege kama watu wangu kia Australia hivyo ndio iko erase war erase so pilot akaona mazaa sawa amejitolea ku dedi eh, clearly juu wa, mpaka wanaonyeshwa gauge man e fuel ni enough kutoka hapa hadi Nairobi do hivi atukatai kwenda Australia wacha twende tu touch down Nairobi hakuna passenger hata mmoja atashuka hii ndege tu touch down Nairobi walete tanka to fuel hii kitu hii ndege iko na range wakipiga hii kitu full tank tunaweza ngangana tuingie wapi Australia aso akasema uongo mbaya mimi nafikiri hatujaona sinema sisi mnataka kuangusha ndege Nairobi alafu muite makarao tupigwe hapo haiwezi ah, wewe kula kona tunaenda Australia so of course iko motion idi eh, moamin anasikia juu ameka first class anasikia wait wait hawa say kwani watumia kili nini ndege ina fuel hatuwezi enda Australia man Australia si hapa mwehoko ati uta I, bro bro So akasimama maze atambui jama atambui akaambia Jackas by the mna ujinga hii ndege hizi fika Australia tuendeni Nairobi mfueli ndege muende Australia kani huko ndio mnadai kwenda ah akaambia kwenda huko kaka kwa kiti tunaenda Australia mtu yangu so pilot akuwa na bodi maze akaannounce akasema ni aje wadau 
uh, ndege vile mnajua iko kwa mikono ya hijackers hijackers wame insist ndege tuende peleke Australia hakuna vile tunaweza cross the ocean na, na ile mafuta tuko nayo hapa so mahali mafuta itakatikia mzee mtabea na mimi i'll ditch the plane kwa maji so poleni mzee may have put an out this way so kila mtu tu strap uh, seat belt yake sawa sawa goda kwena sisi na kila mtu mzee akanga akingojea so ni hivyo tu ndege inaenda engine number one, flame out <laughs> inaisha engine number two, as in ndio watu ni makumbafu hata engine ya kwanza iki flame out captain bado ali try kuambia mzee unaona hiyo ni engine number one gone sasa tunaenda na mafuta kidogo sana iko kwa on the second engine na hiyo ikienda ni hivyo bado waka insist muti yangu peleka iki to australia aje as in just use your brain man so yeah engine number two ika flame out eh, by the time ni na flame out zote mbili waliko kwa island inaitwa comoros comoros island but the pilot a peres order mahali yuko so ni janjes design alijua nikiingia deep sea nikishika coast ya kwenda australia niki crash nita crash mali hata ionekana <laughs> so alikuwa anachezea mahali kuna land mass karibu so by the time fuel inaisha kabisa alikuwa comoros island in fact from the shore to the air uh, to the uh, crash site ni place yani unaweza swim ufike ni pale sifa so maze engine zote zika flame out aka try ku level ndege maze akaiyekelea kwa maji vizuri unfortunately for them maze ile wing moja bana wing tip ndege iko level 100% so wing tip ika chapa maji ya kwanza maze na unajua hiyo hiyo force bana chape maji na ika destabilize kila kitu so ilienda ika gonga maji then ba ika disintegrate People have put aeroplanes on water before but ina kogani hesabu ingine ridiculous sana so ya u captain wetu mazeli hata tu kidogo maze wing ikaguza maji ya kwanza hivyo ndio kila kitu ile happen kumbe maze pale ndani muamini alikuwa ameamua eh hey, aende bila fight alikuwa mpaka ameshatoka kwa kiti amesimama ana argue na ama hijackers maze so vile ndege iligonga maji maze hiyo ni nini noma nika kuko kwa accident gari ikiwa 200 kph na hujafunga seat belt So of course Mazea ali gongo huko ali gongesho kwa kwa hiyo uh, fuselage akadedi hapo all three hijackers lost their lives plane yenyewe ilikuwa na i think 175 souls on board i think only 50 made it alive au wengine wote Mazea waka perish jo kwa kwa maji Mazea na hapo ndo tukapoteza Mazea mo amin one of the best Kenyan photojournalists ever ever alikuwa ametambulika the world over Mazea so unfortunate man alienda juu ya reason ya ufala kama hiyo jua sawa tatu mahali wamekata tu kutumia brain wanataka kufanyisha pilot vitu waziwezekani maze yeah but uh, after his death ndio moamin foundation ilikami kafunguliwa eh, shule ikafunguliwa pale morphos jua alikuwa maze na yani a wealth a, a well of knowledge so wakaona kuna haja hiyo info yote yako nayo iende tu na yeye so wakafungua shule ndio was at least wasewa train iwe wa tutafute mamo amini wengine kama yeye maze inasemekana muamini peke yake picha hivi amepiga over 4 million photos in fact eh ndio jua se bado wako na wako na hiyo psych tu ya kuendelea kusaidia wase plus huwa ga tuna shoot videos zetu plus inaitwa baraza lab baraza lab ni ya one of muhammed amin sons na ametengeneza pale ku make sure tu ame create a conducive environment for 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 artists wakamo wafanye tu mambo yao jua aliona maze vile budake jo alisaidiwa na hiyo sanii yake ya picha jo so inaweza kuwa bit unfair maze ku, kuacha kitu kama hiyo iende tu hivyo maze so baraza la bil create your as a result of that 4 million photos wu jamaa alipiga maze ako na over 13000 hours of footage anything you say it, you name it iko muhammed amin shot it as long as alikuwa alive hiyo time na alikuwa within range alikuwa hapo ku shoot maze legend led tulipoteza gentleman moja wa nguvu sana maze but his spirit still lives on man uh hapo ndo nafungia story yangu ya muamin maze boy wa nguvu sana i hope bana tukue na watu wengine 215 wako na roho kama yake maze as in oh boy nasikia alikuwa ngori design one of his assistants alikuwa na wedding ndio jo mse wake pick yake ilikuwa ridiculous uweze ishi na umse ka una roho ngumu jamaa akona wedding bro wedding wedding Ladies 
Chali yako ako na wedding. Mohamed Amin ni boss wake. Anamwambia ni aje mate. I think groom amech- bride amechukuliwa kwa nyumba. Mohamed Amin anamwambia nini? Piga picha wewe tuko kazi. Mzee walipiga kazi on his wedding day. As in the assistant's wedding day. Assistant anauliza Mohamed Mzee wife wangu ni kama ameelekea church. Anaambiwa Buda. Wedding inaweza ngoja. Wewe ushaisikia news imengoja. Tunapiga kazi. Mtu yangu walipiga kazi wakachukua footage wakaenda ofisi wakadump hiyo footage vizuri lunch time ikafika wakatoka na yeye akamdrive mpaka kwa wedding yake wakapiga wedding after one hour max akamwambia eh hey, dadae aya sasa tukule kachumbari na kaimati video ieditiwe na nani mose wakarudi wakarudi kazi ah aki kuna wamama wamejionea hapa nje ay 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 Ah mimi nikiwa demo mazenda unifanyie hivyo na chali yangu mimi na chali yangu tunakuja kuishi kwako Ah <laughs> Imagine maze on his wedding day alikuwa available for one hour wakawashikanishwa na bibi wakakula hapo mbio mbio wakarudi kazi Ah muamini man Yeah but uh, the commander bana greatness level yake ni almost unachievable Level yake ya wake, hiyo wakefiki yake ni unheard of maze Yeah, na tunafunga kipindi hapa wa Dao tukutane Saturday maze kwa Celebrity First Encounters. Ah, kama kawa bana muji bamba sana kuwa na nyinyi maze nyinyi wa true deadly. Wa true deadly na watambua mbaya sana. Eh, of course bana tupige ma subscription pale tunahitaji za sub- subscriptions mbaya sana. Na kama kawa kama Dao kisikia umeguzwa mahali maze na nataka kuchezeshea mkuru kitu kidogo. Cheza kama wewe man. Cheza kama wewe maze mimi na team tuta nice mbaya sana. How's it? Shukran sana wadau, iwabambe sana. Kitu yote una desire utaiachieve. Peace. Ah. Eh, hey, hey, aje. Aje sasa aje. Aje. <laughs>